This video is mainly for people who are new to Pokemon card investing. We're going to dive into the what, why, how, is it safe, and all of that, but there's also going to be some nuggets for people who have already been uh, investing in the Pokemon space. We're going to dive into all of it real quick, and I'm just going to kind of give my opinion on it. Uh, some of these thoughts are not going to be completely new, but a lot of these are going to be just kind of like my take on everything. So let's just uh, jump into this right away. So what I have here is this is a just a little chart uh, talking about booster box investing for Pokemon. Now this is the Sword and Shield era, and I'm using this as an example because this is the most recent completed era, right? We can go back and we can look, uh, and I, this can be applied for all of the other sets. And this can be applied for Scarlet and Violet as well, but we're still in it, so it's too early to properly do that. But um, before we like super dive into these numbers here, I just wanted to start talking about, if you're not familiar, what is Pokemon investing? Now, if you go and watch videos, do some research, you're going to find that people like me and other, other people, the most common sentiment is going to be that sealed booster boxes or booster box cases are traditionally the best long-term investments and they usually perform very well. Now, there's some caveats to be said that uh, if you're looking at this, not every set will do extremely well, but traditionally you will always make money. Is so, And you have to be very careful. That is a, a very blanket statement. But when it comes to booster boxes, uh, when you give it enough time, they always are above MSRP and never below. You have to keep in mind that you usually, when these sets are coming out, you can buy them well below MSRP. So that is factored in, and it, it's not hard. It just takes a little bit of work sometimes. Okay, so the next thing up would be who who should be Pokemon investing? Now, for me, my opinion is only... Pokemon enthusiasts, like people who are already collectors, should be the ones that are investing. Um, I'm sure there's tons of people that are just like strictly business, and then they might they might not care, might not even know what Pokemon is, and they might be investing in it because it's become more popular. But uh, if if that's you and you you don't know anything about it, I would advise you to not be in the space and uh, look at more traditional investments. Right? That's just my opinion, um, but. I think that enthusiasts uh, should should be the ones investing in the product. Now, also, when it comes to what is Pokemon investing, I want to go back to that just for a second. Pokemon investing is not scalping. I'm not talking about going down to your local Target, your local Walmart, and buying every single pack and every single box off the shelf and flipping them and selling them for more. That's not what I'm talking about, okay? Scalping and investing are different. I'm talking about buying these when they're readily available below MSRP and just kind of keeping them in your closet, keeping them wherever, sitting on them for, you know, sometimes five plus years. Now, I also, a lot of the Pokemon investing is newer and a lot of people haven't even gotten to that five year um, mark yet. And to be honest, a lot of people who are Pokemon investing will either open the product or sell it before that five years anyways. Most people will. Uh, not not everyone has the patience or the commitment uh, to see that through. But before we go any further on uh, the points here, I just wanted to talk a little bit about the chart or this little graph here. So uh, we have over here, we have, uh, it says player name, but it's supposed to say set name. Uh, these, this is the set, right? And uh, we went with just one booster case. And if you're not familiar, a booster case is six booster boxes in its own sealed case. Uh, and I put on here, the cost of goods uh, being $600 for a case. Now this could be plus or minus, but I do think that you could have ended up, if you were just put in the work, you could have gotten all of these sets, honestly, for less than $600 uh, per, per case, right? And let's just assume you bought one. One of every set that came out, right? We're not talking about their specialty sets that don't have booster boxes, we're talking about just the booster box, right? This would have cost you over here, the total cost, you would have spent $7,200. Um, for a lot of people, that's a lot of money, okay? So you can um, run this up or down depending on how much you're looking to. Uh, we'll get to how much you should invest later um, or what I think you should do. 
<clears throat> everyone is different, right? And don't let anybody feel don't let, don't let anybody make you feel bad if you're not investing this amount or higher. Like you, you can do Pokemon investing at a small scale if that's what you want and that's what makes you happy, right? So these market values. This is currently what the booster boxes are going for as of this recording from TCG Player for six boxes. Now, uh, sometimes you can sell a case for a premium and can be above six boxes price, but we're just going for, say you bought the case and you cut it open and you're selling individual boxes, right? So this is, this is what you would have paid for it, and then this is currently what you could sell it for. Now, this sale price here, um, I should have put it here in this fees category, but I didn't. This sale price right here is at factoring in for like eBay fees. So we're taking out 14%. And so uh, you can see right here, so Sword and Shield, you bought a case at 600, you can sell it for 1770, but you're only gonna get 1522, which is $922 profit, right? So that's, a, that's doing pretty good right there off of the first set that came out, right? Now, obviously there are sets like Evolving Skies, which is doing crazy numbers right now so same thing you paid 600 you're can sell it for 39.90 plus or minus depending and you're gonna you know be doing well off with the profit here right 2800 bucks profit but then you're also gonna have outlying sets that you know they're just they just don't perform as well um, and so we're, we're factoring in buying one of every single set right and so you can see the profit on here on battle styles right now um, also you know it's, it's 65 bucks and vivid voltage is 96 but keep in mind you could probably could have gotten these these uh sealed cases for less than this 600 you could have been more i mean it it it, it does vary but um you're you're still looking profitable at this point which is a good thing now you can you can sell out right here and like just take your tiny bit of profit and roll that into the more successful sets uh, moving forward or you can just keep and hold long term like these will continue to grow over time they're just obviously not the be the best performers also something that you guys need to keep in mind i'm trying to be uh, as transparent and open and honest as possible here with uh with these sets so sword and shield went through like the covid boom okay so there was a lot of hype things ran up things were crazy like vivid voltage these boxes were at one point these were crazy crazy expensive right also we just ran on an alt art um high and booster box high and we've come down off of this so if you could have sold these a little while ago for a lot more than some of these prices here depending on the set right um some of these boxes are starting to come down and they're leveling off now that doesn't mean they're gonna they're not tanking per se they're just the market they're um correcting the, the market is finding what they value them at because it's what happens with a lot of investments they grow too fast they have to come back down a little bit so essentially what i'm saying is and oh, one not one more point sorry just to double back the some of these sets aren't very old right so not not that many years have gone by um we'll touch on that in one second but you could have spent seventy two hundred dollars and you could have made 71.49 so total sale price 14,000 you could have doubled your money and we're going to talk we'll pull up look so here's the margin calculator um just under 50 percent okay now that's doing pretty good now let's say um let's say you know you you had to pay a little bit more for those boxes um because that does happen you know say you were at 8,000 you'd be at 44 percent Say you were even higher and you paid 9000 for all of those boxes. You're still at 37%. Anyways, you know, obviously you want to be, this is where you want to be. There is a, a world where you could have gotten those boxes for cheaper and you could have been even somewhere around here maybe. So 54% profit, but we're trying to just keep it. I think this is a bit more reasonable. So we're looking at 50% profits here. Um, here's the dates. So this would have been, Sword and Shield would have started in 2020. So you would have been slowly working on this for four years. Um, so keep that in mind, like, since you started with Sword and Shield. But the last uh, Sword and Shield set on here, Silver Tempest, which is 2022, only a few years old. So um, that's how long these sets um, you know, tend to take to come out. And so this is kind of what you can expect if you were doing like one case per set for a whole, for a whole era, right? 
Um, something that a lot of other people are talking about, and I, we're not going to dive too deeply into it. There's tons of other channels that are talking about it, but uh, you know, we, if you guys want to let me know in the comments what you guys think about this, but um, I'm not saying that this is the best and possible investment that you guys can make, right? And there's no downside and no risk. I'm not saying that by any means, but um, and I'm not the first person to bring this up, right? I'm just bringing up another point. Um, if you Google this, um, the S&P 500 annual return rate is 24%. Um, that's what it's been. So just keep that in mind. We're at 50%. Albeit some, you know, some, some of those have been, you know, quite a few years and some of them have only been a few. So it, it can depend, but point being, we're going to bring this back to the topic at hand, which is just Pokemon investing, right? Now, so that brings up, is it safe? And related to that, like, should you be, is it safe? I think it's, I think it's very safe overall. Now, the totally, the Pokemon market could fall out from under itself and boxes could go, you know, to next. And I don't think they, I don't, think it, I don't think it's realistic that they would go to nothing because you have to keep in mind as well that Pokemon is the most popular franchise of anything ever all time like look it up right it makes the most money of anything of all time right more than Disney stuff more than it's just a money printer right it's the most popular franchise so um they're not going to go to zero but um it is possible okay so I, I think you have to say that and with uh, traditional investing, like stocks or your 401k or anything like that, um, you know, companies can go bankrupt and you can't, it can go to zero as well. It is possible. It's not likely, you know, but companies can fall out of the S&P 500. Um, if you have real estate, um, real estate can go to zero. It not Odds are it's not going to go to zero. Um, because you're still going to have some value. So it's not actually going to zero, but you know, there's things that can happen in real estate investing. There's things that can happen in any investment. So, um, is it safe? I would say yes. You guys should do your own research for that. Um, and we can, if you want, I can make some more videos looking at some information further back, but I'm just focusing on the last era of what we have and looking optimistically towards the next, the current era moving forward. Right? So is it safe? Yes. Why should you do it? So back on who should do it, I said that Pokemon enthusiasts should do it. People that who are into it should do it. And if that's you, the why for me personally is to grow my collection uh, further because there's a lot of cards and that I want to have that are very expensive. And I learned pretty early on that uh, ripping packs and boxes was not profitable is the fastest way for me to lose money. So that led me to wanting, I wanted to have these boxes because I thought they were cool. One, I, I do like displaying them. I have a, I like looking at them. Um, and I do think that that is a factor for some people. Um, you know, you can look at your stocks, your 401k or whatever on your phone and you can see the value, but it's not a physical thing. Um, so if that's value valuable to you, then that is something to, to think about. Um, I like seeing the boxes. Yes. My house could burn down and I could lose the boxes like that. Somebody could steal them. Um, you know, those are possibilities as well. Right. So, uh, you have to keep in mind that there, there's risk there, but, um, a, a physical tangible thing that you can have. Um, some people, a lot of people like to say, Oh, well, if it goes to zero, I can open the boxes. Yeah, you totally can. Right, I don't think it's ever going to go to zero, but um, there is some level of happiness that you can get out of that. Um, for me, like I would open them if they were pretty much worthless, might as well. But that's just that's just my opinion, right? Next up is how much should you invest? Say um, you're wanting to look into investing in Pokemon cards, um, right? Um, how much should you invest? Well, I'll give you an example for myself that I have uh, a 401k, a Roth. Um, I own real estate because I bought a home. Um, those are my main, there's, I have a few other investments, but when I calculate it out, I'm probably like, 
it's less than 5% of what all of my investments are that are in Pokemon cards. Now, there's some people that are way more than that, and there's some people that are way less. Some uh, There's a lot of people that will tell you 1%. You should do 1% only. Uh, some people will say do zero, right? Um, I do believe that there is something to be said for putting your money where your mouth is, and I, I do want that number to... I want to be... Honestly, I want to be closer to 10 or 15%, maybe even 20 at the most, because I do, I believe in it that strongly, but I, um, currently I'm not there financially. Everyone is in different, right? Different places. So I, I am actively investing more, but, um, you know, some people just have different amounts that they can do at different times. So I want to increase that percentage, but, um, I do think that it is, I don't think you should have 50%, 100% of your investment in Pokemon cards. I don't think that that is smart. Um, and I don't, I wouldn't really tell anybody to do that. However, if you do that, I'm not gonna, I'm not really gonna judge you for it. I just, I would never advise somebody to do that. If you, if you do it, good on you, right? Um, just understand the risk. I, you shouldn't have a hundred percent investment in anything, in any one thing. You should always diversify. Um, so that, that's the what, who should do it, why you should do it, is it safe, and how much you should do it. Now, for those who are new, if you're this far in the video, obviously you're you're learning something or you're enjoying it. Um, so hit that subscribe button while you're there. Um, and I'm gonna tell you guys how you should start um, if you haven't already. How you should start, first off, is one, you should be informed, right? You should learn, you shouldn't blindly invest and you shouldn't just trust me. Um, Go back and watch some of my videos, my other ones. I tell you like a lot of sets that I like, booster boxes that I'm investing in. But go watch other people. And don't just only watch YouTube videos. Inform yourself, right? Learn a little bit about the market. Learn about uh, when reprints tend to come. Um, you know, learn what other people are saying. Uh, you know, in, become informed, right? Learn all about it. That would be the first thing before you're doing anything is learn. Then... After that, after you're a little bit informed, um, there's a lot of different products out there. Um, this is oh, we're gonna just condense this a little bit. Essentially, if you're wanting to buy sealed booster boxes, that is the best way to start. A lot of people, um, there's nothing wrong with getting like hanger packs or elite trainer boxes, but just know that traditionally the booster boxes have and probably will continue to perform the best over time. I think that's a safe thing to say. So just keep that in mind that booster boxes are probably going to be the best thing. And I will say that I am guilty of, I have bought other products that later, um, I was, after I bought enough of them, I was like, dang, I could have just, what, what was I doing? I could have just bought a few booster boxes <laughs> and I, it would have been better. So sometimes if you're doing like, oh, you do 20 here, 50 here on this stuff. And then before you know it, you're like, oh, I could have got multiple booster boxes instead of these lesser products. So um, that is something that you guys can learn from, from my um, experience. You know, I'm not perfect in this um, by any means. So that's pretty much it. I just kind of wanted, like, I kind of wanted to touch on this. I've touched a little bit on it before in the past, and it's it can be very controversial. A lot of people don't like Pokemon investing. Um, a lot of people love it. It's kind of growing. It's becoming more popular, uh, and yeah, I just I just wanted to touch on it real quick. I feel like I gave a pretty good overall like analysis of my take on it, and yeah, if you guys have any more questions, feel free to let me know in the comments. Um, I also have a Discord server. The link is down below if you guys want to join. Um, that's slowly growing, but you know we can chat on there. Um, we could share deals right? Um, but yeah, I just enjoy, I enjoy Pokemon cards. At the end of the day, I enjoy Pokemon cards and I was getting burnt <laughs> ripping packs. So that's why I started investing. That's kind of it for me in a nutshell. Um, that's gonna do it for this one, guys. Um, hope you enjoyed my rant. I'll catch you guys in the next one. And remember, it was never a phase.